Now, if you want to call me uh, prejudicial, biased, politically incorrect, whatever, I don't care what you say, I'm going to tell you from what the Bible ordained. And then what I want you to do is I want you to be honest by looking at your, the life in this church. Now, if you've been here only a, a short while, if you've been here less than a year, you haven't seen enough yet. I've been in churches for all my life, and I'm talking about the right kind of Bible-believing churches too, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Because I've been there all my life, I've seen this problem, and Satan's going to use this on you guys too. You ready for this? So, I'm not going to be popular after this, but both sides can hate me. I'm going to talk to you about the problem of a man and the problem of a woman. Now, there's a reason, there's a reason why God put the curse at Genesis 3. He put the curse, we might think, just for judgment and punishment. That is true, but you got to realize this. Whenever God gives judgment or punishment, he also does it for your benefit too. He does it sometimes for your blessing, for your protection. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the problems with a woman and a man. The problem with the woman and the problem with the man is this. The woman's problem that I noticed, but it becomes a powerful asset that the Lord could use or the Lord might not use. It's the tongue. The man's problem irresponsibility Amen. I don't care what you say this is the problem I notice think about this why did God want Eve to submit to the husband where it went to first Timothy 2 look at this verse 11 let the woman learn in silence with all subjection you know God wants her to be quiet why is that? But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in what? That's the reason why God wanted a woman to submit under a man, a wife to submit under a man. There's something that has to do with silence. Why doesn't God want a woman to teach or to preach? It has to do with silence here. Notice, for Adam was first formed than Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the what? Woman deceived was in the transgression. She was deceived. The first sin that Eve committed actually was not disobeying God, but correcting your Bible at Genesis 3. Right. Now, how did that lead to her disobedience later on? How that led to her disobedience later on is that how did the mankind fall into sin? She had to talk to Adam. Notice right here, and then the man, the Bible says the man was not deceived. It was the woman. Why? Because man, what did Adam do? Why did Adam decide to choose sin? He was irresponsible. There's your problem there. Now, I have a uh, video. I'm surprised it went vi uh, viral. Uh, women have a secret power that demons want. So you can watch that video. There is a lot, you women have a lot of power with this tongue. Okay. So that's why God wants you to be in silence. Why so, Pastor? Because the reason why is this, is because this tongue has been your problem, women, where it caused a lot of hurt and pain throughout time. I've seen that in church. I've seen it where it always, uh, the, you, know where, uh, you know what I always see as a problem concerning church splits? It's usually some woman who has something right here. Well, men do that too. You're right. Women are irresponsible too, you're right. But I'm going to ask you this one question, okay? Uh, this one is kind of like a preach and format, is that basically if I were to give out a sheet of paper and I were to ask you to name me three top people in our church who has this problem and this problem, whose names do you think are going to be mostly or mainly mentioned and what gender you think they will be. You think you go home and pray about it. That will make you reflect on your actions as well. It's going to make you reflect a lot on your actions. Men and women should both be under conviction here. Amen. So sometimes you women got to see what you've been saying 
And you men got to see how you've acted in the church. All right? Men's performance is poor, and the women's conversation is poor. Okay, now anyways, the irresponsibility of man, and that's why the whole world fell. And notice that God did not blame the woman for that. You know who did God blame? God blamed man for the, man, for the world's sin. You know why? Because you men have a problem with leadership. You men have that problem. You don't know how to take control rightly in your household and to make and you don't learn to take accountability, responsibility for poor choices made. You know what men want to do? Avoid it. Neglect it. A lot of times you men are lazy. You don't use your head, men. A lot of times you're hot-headed. You go for it. In the moment, that's flesh. Am I preaching something here? You women have a problem where you go by how you think and feel. Men hardly, men sometimes, you know, you hardly use your brains, but God knows that the woman, you know, they tend to think a lot. And because they think a lot, this guy comes out. Look, you women can't hide it. Even if you try to refrain it, the Bible says whatever's in your heart, it's going to come out. There's an issue here. You, you know how we can have a happy life together as a church and as a family, and as a home, is if you men and you women realize your weaknesses and your problems, and you humble yourself and say, God, I repent of this, and trust me, your home will be intact, and your church will be intact. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. But if any provide not for his own, see that? That's a male gender there. That's a man. If you don't take care of your house, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is what? Worse than an infidel. Infidel, heretic, you're worse than one. How would you like to be known as a person that's worse than Charles Russell? Worse than Joseph Smith? You men. Sometimes people, uh, sometimes there's a lot of men out there who don't work in jobs, they don't work hard, and they don't provide their own for their house, and then they rely on the church and depend upon the church. I've had those kind of people in my church before. And because of that, they ruin their homes. Especially if you're in the ministry, you've got to realize this. The Bible says for a pastor, for a minister, he's got to take care of his household, otherwise he's not qualified to preach. So if you don't, uh, that's why you'll notice 80 to 90% of ministers, they work in jobs. You got to realize that. So you got to realize that if you fail, look, if you fail to take care of your own house, you can't take care of your church, man. I want to get more involved in preaching and helping out, Pastor, not if you can't take care of your home. You're not going to climb. And I'm not letting the women slide either. The Lord, do you know how the Lord raises up the humble if they're humble and you women have that golden opportunity you might think of this as a curse or a burden you better take this as an opportunity and a blessing the more you learn to be humble the more the lord will exalt you you know what i think i think that you women have a greater chance than the men to earn more rewards at the judgment seat of christ you know why? Because you have more opportunity to be in humility, in silence. And then you know what? I noticed I talked to some charismatic women, and this is the problem with them. Especially if they have a... Look, charismatics, they're sincere people. you got to understand that. But that sincerity is, can be very emotional and fleshy, which is dangerous. So these women, charismatic women that I've known who do not have a position to teach or to preach or any kind of where they can direct or lead over here, they get very emotional, they get very upset. And then they think that, uh, that Bible believers are biased people, prejudicial, putting down women. And look, when you do that, th there's a problem right here. You women got to ask yourself this. Why do you want to talk? Why do you, what I mean by talk? Why do you want to talk in teaching a class? leading a church, preaching, etc., doing something in a group. Why? Because, see, you don't learn to refrain. 
oh no, I'm humble and all that. If you're humble, then you'd be more appreciative in silent, uh, in silent opportunities, not opportunities to speak. Mm. Here's another thing. One thing I notice is this too, is that what really bothers me about these charismatic women, and let me, you know, let me just not limit them. Let me just say all women out there. What really bothers me is that this, they get uh, upset where they don't have a position to speak out and they hardly win a soul to salvation with their mouth. It's what they want to choose to speak. That's dangerous. You got you to gotta realize this too, uh, women, is that men, there's a lot of men the Lord did not use to uh, direct or lead or to preach or teach either. So this, you got to realize this, is that the more you're in a humble position, the Lord can exalt you even more. You know what's, uh, this is, uh, this, whether it sounds incorrect or not to you, this is very biblical and realistic. There is no greater blessing to have in a church or in a family life than a woman who learns to keep her mouth shut and doesn't cause problems but always is that silent partner supporting behind the scenes, doesn't get recognition, the one who cleans up the room, the one who uh, tells the person, I've been praying for you in my spare time, I've been uh, helping out in setting up the kitchen and cooking food, and then when the man gets discouraged and the pastor gets discouraged, they lift them up and help them out. There is nothing more encouraging than that. That is realistic. That is realistic. That's why a lot of times, the, uh, you notice how I praised a lot on my mother. She was that woman. Amen. That's why you'll notice she's a lot of time quiet. Once you get her talking, though, then she'll start talking. Like, I mean, talk, you know, talk, talk, talk. Why? Because she learned to be silent. Let me say this, okay? This is good word of advice, okay? Uh, I'm sure that this is going to be fine, too. In the beginning of our church, my mother had to learn a lot to be a pastor's wife. And guess what? She made the similar mistakes women make. She learned more on this as she matured in her Christian walk. You men have a problem with being irresponsible, and that's the reason why what, what happens. When this is becomes opposite right here, it becomes a dangerous thing. You know what the dangerous thing is? Because women don't refrain and men become irresponsible, it becomes the ideal home that Satan wants. That's why we live, in a we live in a society that's always in a feminist perspective, you got to understand. Didn't you notice that? You know why? Men have to listen to what the woman says. Men, you know why? You don't want to use your brains. You don't want to discipline yourself. You don't want to take account of your children, your wife, and everybody. So the woman, because she's constantly thinking and she's more sensitive about the welfare of the home, she runs her tongue and runs everything. And that is the chaotic home that the Lord will never, ever bless. You men better learn to take responsibility for your actions. If you don't have a, here's the thing, if you don't have a schedule, if you don't have a diary or anything notes or anything planned out, you just go by the cuff of the moment, I worry, I'm scared for you. Because you think that, oh, it'll work out, it'll work out. And then what's worse is that when you become a Bible believer and you get in a praying mode and you go, oh, I live out by faith, I live out by faith, but no, God's teaching you, no, I want you to stop being lazy. That's good. Use your head, friend, okay? We, there's a lot of miracles that happen in our church too, right? Is there something you noticed about this pastor where you can sometimes think he's kind of paranoid? You know Why? I've learned to survive in this ministry. And not only that, produce a fruit. You have to think. You have to be careful. You have to wait. That's why I'll say don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. You notice that? That's wisdom, and that's taking responsibility for hurt in the church. You got to understand that fact. So I'm sorry if you think that I'm backslidden, I'm cold, and that I'm slow, but I don't care. Go ahead and bust your neck, Simon Peter, and then cut somebody's ear off, and then you're an irresponsible person that the Lord will refuse to use. So you got to realize you men and women got to switch roles, realize your weakness, your problem, repent of that, and trust me, it will become the most beautiful home and the most beautiful church you'll ever have.
Why do you think, now here's my question, is that, and then I'll close for tonight. Why did God do it this way? I mean, if women are so good in this and men are, you know, so good in being irresponsible, why doesn't the Lord just switch roles or something like that? Do you know why? Because it is a fleshy tendency. That's why. We're all born in sin and that's how our flesh is built. Lord wants us to learn how to discipline ourselves. How to refrain our fleshy tendency. And the more you give up how you feel, what you desire in your flesh, the more you'll see God working and honoring your life beyond your wildest imagination. All right, so you men and women get to work for the Lord. That's why we're going to live in this society. You see this society? You all get mad about the conspiracies and elites taking over the world. You, you know where it all begins? The home. That's where it all begins. The man not doing his role, the woman not doing her role. That's where it all begins. Now get to work.